I was thinking uh, for this Sunday's Life, Liberty, and Live In, having four guests, Mr. Producer. And I think it would be the highest rated program in the history of cable TV. Joe Biden, Mitch McConnell, John Fetterman, and Dianne Feinstein. All four of them. How do you think that would go? Maybe I'd have to save that for late night, don't you think? As funny as that sounds, isn't it pathetic? Anyway, I hope you had a good weekend. My wife and I went to the Jersey Shore, Atlantic City, Ventnor, Margate. I haven't been there in years and years and years. We had a wonderful time. And we left on a Friday and we came back on Sunday because I don't like all these backups. And um, really it kind of recharges your, your batteries. You know, two weeks left till the release of The Democrat Party Hates America, so preseason for the book is coming to an end. Very excited about it. We'll talk a little bit more about it, but we've had about a two-month preseason, a little touch here and a little touch there, but now we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty. America, the spending, borrowing, taxing, yearly deficit, overall debt is so out of control, I don't know that we can ever claw out of this. Now, we have a lot of stuff going on in this country, but this is one of the areas that most of the media find boring or incomprehensible, so they just kind of play inside baseball. Is there going to be a government shutdown? Is there not going to be a government shutdown? The Senate Republicans, they want to do a short-term spending bill, but the House Republicans... Are... Okay. Let's start with their propaganda and try and undress it. A government shutdown. The government never shuts down. I wish it would. The government, hello, the government never shuts down. Parts of it might, most of it does not. And the parts that do shut down are intended to impose the greatest amount of panic, fear, pressure, on the American people. So the Washington get all the money at once. So the bureaucrat, <laughs> bureaucrats can get all the money they want. And we go on to the next and the next and the next. Now they, they didn't mind as I've told you before. When they shut down the private sector. They didn't mind when they shut down schools including elementary schools. They didn't mind setting back the nation's youngest generation back 18 months in terms of quality and of education and competency in reading, writing, and arithmetic. They didn't mind that. They didn't mind shutting down places of worship. They didn't mind destroying small businesses, particularly restaurants and hotels and so forth. They didn't mind all the damage they did to the private sector, America. <laughs> and they shut it down for months. Months. Oh, the government shut down. Here's the deal. All the bureaucrats know this. All the politicians know this. You may not. If there's an actual shutdown in the sense that 80 Three percent of the federal government continues, ladies and gentlemen. Seventeen percent does not. I got that from Paul Ryan, the former head of the, yeah, former speaker, but also former head of the Ways and Means Committee. On this program years ago, he said, you know, over eighty percent of the government goes on, the entitlements go on, that is, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Other spending, VA benefits go on. All that continues. The military goes on. The essential personnel stay. And for the federal government, you know, that's 83% of them. But the federal government won't go bankrupt. 
All it has to do is cut its spending. And we'll get into this again because it kind of happened again. But first, let's begin with the shutdowns. In 1976, the federal government was shut down under the presidency of Gerald Ford for 10 days. We're still here, America. Ooh, look at that. We're still here. In 1977, under Jimmy Carter, the federal government shut down for 12 days. 1977, shortly after that shutdown, it shut down for another eight days. So in September that year, it shut down 12 days. In October that year, it shut down eight days. And guess what, under Carter? In December of that year, it shut down another eight days. Then... The following year under Carter, 1978, in October, it shut down for 18 days. Oh, my gracious goodness. 1979 under Carter, it shut down another 11 days. What was going on here? Carter went after these, uh, these feather bedding projects of the government. You know, he ran on a, uh, on a budget plan that would start from zero. Zero-based budgeting, he called it. He had problems from Democrats and Republicans. He shut down the government a lot. Total of 60 days out of four years. Then the great Ronald Reagan comes in. Congress wants to spend money on everything but defense. 1981, he shuts down the government for two days in November. 1982, he shuts down the government for one day, September 30 to October 2. Again, 1982, December, he shuts it down three more days. 1983, shuts it down three days. 1984, shuts it down two days. 1984, again, later, shuts it down one day. 1986, he shuts it down one day. 1987, he shuts it down one day. Here we are, America. Federal government's been shut down about 80 days until that point. Can you imagine? President George H.W. Bush shuts it down for three days in 1990. Bill Clinton shuts it down for five days in 1995. 95-96, Clinton facing off with Newt Gingrich. They shut it down for three weeks. 21 days. George H.W. Bush, advised by Karl Rove and the other lightweights, never vetoed a spending bill, never shut down the government, and spending went through the roof. McConnell says the government will never be shut down. Not while he's shuffling along. And the pallbearers behind him called them Paul Barrows before Mitch McConnell was staring into the space they have said the same thing and of course Chris Sununu who's now the philosopher king for <clears throat> rhinos on my favorite network and all other networks for that matter because he's a putz he says it would be a bad idea to shut down the government bad idea to impeach Biden can't we just all get along? So Barack Obama shuts down the government, <clears throat> excuse me, for 16 days. 16 days. That's actually Ted Cruz who does that, Mr. Producer. Brave, brilliant, and right. Because Cruz was trying to repeal Obamacare. He was attacked by the Wall Street Journal editorial page. Why? More putzes. He was attacked by the ruling class, by the rhinos, by the corporatists. They all pretend they don't want big government, but they love it. They lavish in it. They swim in it like pigs in mud. 2018, Donald Trump. One day the government was shut down. 2018 again. Three days the government was shut down. Trump again. December 22 to January 25. 34 days the government was shut down. So, ladies and gentlemen, this comes from the Congressional Research Service. They're never wrong. What are we going to do if they shut it down again? Oh, my God! What? 
will happen? Nothing. It'll be another weekend. We just had a three-day weekend, do we not, America? It's called Labor Day, which means you don't work on Labor Day. It's oxymoronic, but I understand. Labor Day, where we're nobody's going to labor. Hey! But anyway, three days where the government was shut down. Did any of you try and make a call to the EPA? No answer. Department of Agriculture? No answer. Social Security Administration? No, they were closed. Your local Medicare up? Nope, close. Medicaid? Nope, close. Anybody try to make a call to the White House? Nah, close. The White House closed. How about Capital Hill? Nah, nope, they're out. Closed. Wow. How about DHS and all the illegal? Nah, not answering. Closed for three days. And here we are. We call it a holiday. Shouldn't we call a government shutdown a holiday? It's like, whew, at least the IRS will stay up my ass. Whew, left, at least the FBI won't knock down my door. Whew. Whew, at least some liberal in some federal court won't throw me in jail. Okay, I'm all right. I'm all right. Shut down. Good. And when Congress isn't meeting, that means we have more of our liberty. But notice, in all seriousness, how they treat private sector shutdowns and government shutdowns. I've made this point repeatedly. The private sector shutdowns for two years were called righteous. Anybody who opposed them was called selfish. Selfish. And in fact, the more you shut down, the more you forced people out of work, The more you sheltered businesses, the more money you got from the government. Which we're paying for today, many ways. Now why would it be righteous to do exactly the opposite? Shut the government down. Because you'll deny resources to the politicians and the bureaucrats who are destroying our economy. We're destroying your pension plans. We're destroying your paychecks. We're driving up the cost of food and fuel and utilities, basics, because they won't stop spending and borrowing. And there's not enough tax money on planet Earth to pay for what they're doing. Not enough. Not enough. 